Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. These videos will be taking a narrow look comparing the Steam Deck to its competitors. In my previous video, I took a small look at a subset of games. I'm going to take this opportunity to try and tackle each game I'm allowed to show. Because Forza Horizon 5 has its own built-in benchmark, I thought it would be good to start there. This video is going to be divided into a few parts. First is going to take a look at three different presets, Lowest, High, and Ultra. I'll comment over them to highlight what's happening to give you a better idea of how to digest that data. I've also included the summary screen from each handheld. Second, I want to take an opportunity to look at why GameScope is important instead of using a game's built-in frame limiter sometimes. Additionally, I'll be showing some frame time data and giving some context behind what's happening and ultimately which mode is my preference. Last part of this video will be the full benchmark runs for the Steam Deck only, just for those who would like to see. There's a few things in the series of benchmarks I'd like you to keep an eye on. Here in this very low preset benchmark, keep an eye on the GPU clock of the Win3 and the Aya Neo Next specifically. The Win3 has the hardest time here keeping 60 consistent, despite the fact that PL1 is set to 35 watt. Because the GPU maxes out early on and the CPU doesn't need to busy itself, we only ever really average 26 watt total system power on the Win3. Meanwhile, the Io Neo Next is doing an overall better job maxing out its GPU frequency. Despite the fact that the Steam Deck really isn't pulling ahead here in any appreciable manner, I would instead say to look at the total system power. When we look at it from that angle, the battery life says it all. The Steam Deck is getting better battery life here, and it's doing it with a smaller capacity battery. Looking at the high preset benchmark, we find a clear-cut case where the Steam Deck loses against its competitors. With regards to the Win 3, performance looks to be relatively the same, but because it has a larger battery, it pulls ahead with a small lead. Looking at the Aya Neo Next, not only does it consistently have a slight lead in performance, it manages to do so while having the same battery life expectancy. This last bench is more academic than anything. None of these handhelds are truly capable of running with the Ultra preset. The more important thing that I want you to pay attention to is the following. When we boost our settings, we are configuring our workload to be more GPU dependent or GPU bound. You'll notice this in this particular bench that the Steam Deck is in the lead here while using less total power than the high preset benchmark because we don't need to engage the CPU as much. If you'll notice, we are sticking to 2 GHz on the CPUs more often than not. The end result is we are using less total power on average. One thing is for certain, I'm looking forward to being able to bench this on the Steam Deck running Windows to see if anything changes. For the last part of this video, I wanted to briefly talk about GameScope and why you should always explore using it. There are three ways we can target 30 FPS with Forza Horizon 5. First, we can keep GameScope locked to 60 Hz, but instead have the game limit frame rate internally. Second, we can have GameScope inform the game the screen is 30 Hz and keep VSync off. Third, we can have GameScope inform the game the screen is 30 Hz and keep VSync on. Those are the three different ways we can run at 30 hertz, and I reran the benchmark scene and exported the frame time data. Up first is GameScope 60, but frame limit 30. If you take a look at the small frame time graph here, it looks mostly even, but when we export this full scene, this is what it looks like. For what it's worth, when I play with these settings, it's not too bad. The only downside is when you run with these settings, you will use more power generally than with GameScope forced to 30. Second, let's take a look with GameScope at 30, but VSync disabled. If we look at the actual gameplay, it looks a little better than frame limiting at 30, but in practice, when playing like this, it's really not good. Every now and again, the game will just lurch around. Last, this is GameScope at 30, but with VSync enabled. Here, the game tries its best to lock the 30 FPS, and as should be visible from the gameplay segment, it's a rather clean line. However, if we export this, 
look at the whole timeline. You can see that every now and again we have some erratic frame time. One other curiosity is that from this viewpoint, it becomes rather obvious that there is a subtle but consistent slide from 34 milliseconds per frame all the way down to 32 milliseconds per frame. And then it snaps right back to 34 milliseconds. It's curious. Overall, GameScope at 30 with VSync enabled will give the best battery life. With some other tweaks I've shown before, we are able to boost battery life by another 10 to 15 minutes and keep a consistent 30. Hopefully this shows you the importance of GameScope. I'll be showing this off in further demos. For now, I'll leave you off with the straight benchmarks. As always, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.